Hello, this is KJ, and this is an instructional video on how to use the QLC Plus lighting console in kiosk mode. So QLC Plus, as you can see, the icon on the desktop is this bulb here, and this controls our automated DMX uh, stage lighting. Uh, there's two different versions that you can, you can run. There's the editor mode, which is uh, the one that we'd use to set up all the lights and to build all of the scenes and different functions in. And then there's the kiosk mode here, it says kiosk. Um, it's also the one that's pinned to the taskbar. Uh, if you select that, that brings up a very basic version of QLC. And this is the version that is suitable to use during a service, as long as you don't need to make any adjustments. So once the service goes, this is, this is the panel that you're going to use to run all of the lights. So a quick orientation of QLC plus kiosk. Uh, there's a couple of things that you're going to need to know. Uh, first is I'll direct your attention up here uh, the, to the top left where we have our different lighting selections. And this is for our backlights and uplights. Uh, so obviously we have white and red, purple, green, blue, a handful of different solid colors. And then down here we have a couple of different combinations, uh, mixing amber and purple. Um, the sky is the limit here. Whatever different combinations we want to build, we can put in here. But once we put them in here, there are options we can select during an actual service. So now I've just selected white for up and backlighting. And now I've selected, oh, selected purple, blue, amber, Amber high, pink low, pink purple low. Okay, we call this a solo frame because uh, when you can only select one box at a time. Uh, as soon as I select a new box, the other box is unselected, right? So that's how a solo frame works, one at a time, which is really helpful when you want to transition from one color to another color. Uh, down here in a different solo box, we have the moving colors, right? So uh, these four options here are called RGB matrices, and basically it's it's uh, colors that are similar but changing, and they cycle through a couple of different colors uh, at a certain speed, and they kind of dim and come and go, and some of them are not very obvious, like ocean is very passive, and I'll, I'll take red off here, right? Because this is a solo frame that stands by itself, so if I had red selected, it's additive. It's red plus this, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, so ocean is kind of cool, sunset is a bit warmer, you know, and then pulsing plasma is moving a bit quicker and it's got a few more colors in it. Uh, so it's a nice way to ramp things up for maybe like a chorus or something where you want a little higher intensity to use something that's got some pulsing and moving colors as opposed to just one solid color. Uh, moving over to the right here, we have our chasers. So these two options here are, um, Similar to the matrices where they move, but they're actually a combination of scenes that alternate back and forth between each other. Uh, so the chasers are, uh, let's say, even more pronounced. So it might be something you might want to use for like a bridge or something like that where you really have a high energy thing. Um, but they, they can be pretty handy. Uh, green is what's currently selected. Don't be thrown off by the orange. Uh, the orange just means that that's a scene that's used in that chaser, and it's just letting you know that it's using that scene. Uh, green is what you want to pay attention to as what's currently selected. So when it comes to chasers, one thing that's really handy is setting the timing of the lights to match the timing of the music. Right? And if you look just to the right here, we have uh, some speed dials over here and a tap button, uh, and this allows us to set our chaser timing to, to beat match to the music. Uh, so the duration is the one that we want to use. There is also fade in and fade out that you can set as well, but primarily duration, right? So I'm going to tap, 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 right? So we can see that oh, I, I must have double tapped. Hang on, tap, tap, tap. Okay. So I tapped it, and as you can see, uh, the distance between or the length of time between my taps was. 647 milliseconds. Okay, that's so you have to time that with the music if you want to use this functionality. Uh, I tapped it, and that's the the alternating uh, lights go according to that tap, and uh, I've I've now synced it up with my music hypothetically, right? Uh, conversely, I can also put in a time directly into here if I want. If I knew exactly what I wanted it to be in terms of milliseconds, I can put that in directly. Uh, or seconds, I can do 1.3 seconds, uh, as you can see, 
it's pretty easy to directly input a time into here, or you can use the tap button, so you have options. Uh, also, speaking of the timing, let me go back to my solid colors here. So I don't, we don't usually do a direct cut from one color to another. We do kind of a cross dissolve. So if you navigate using these buttons up here, you can navigate to the different um, timing menus here. So if I go over to this one, this is solid color timing where you can also tap or you can put in a, a time directly. So if I wanted to drag in the transition time from one second to three seconds, put three in here. And now when I transition from one color to another, it takes three seconds to crossfade between uh, the color that was selected to the new color. And then if you want to go back to a common choice like one second, which is usually what we use, just hit the one second button and it goes right back. So nice and easy. All right. Uh, let's go down to the movers. So as I mentioned, these are back and up lights, both of these two solo boxes here. Okay. Uh, the movers, this is all of the colors for the movers. Uh, typically, we're using white. And typically, we're going to use just white. Uh, full power is a little cool. That's full red, green, blue, white, amber. So that's the full amount of power that these lights put out. But just white is tuned a little bit better for our cameras because I brought red, green, blue down to warm it up a little bit. And it still gives us a decent level of light. If we wanted to go with something a little softer and a little bit less intensity, we could choose soft white. Uh, so a few different options we built in here. I'm sure that we're going to continue to add some different lighting options as we go through. Uh, so typically during a message or during worship, you know, we're, we're running just white and, and we're setting the positions on the moving heads because this is our front line. So that's really what's going to work uh, before service or after service. We could always throw it over to a themed color to get a cool look on our stage. But once again, remember, these are front lights. So whatever, whoever's on stage, if there's someone on stage, they will be uh, blue or green or one of these colors. OK, so typically during a service, it's just white. Uh, that brings us down to the mover positions. Uh, so we have a, a number of different static positions that we've built in here. Uh, and we're, of course, going to be adding two. This is just to get us started here. Uh, Worship mid-platform uh, has the lights on the upper and mid-platform. So this is for somebody that's leading from the mid-platform or somebody that's leading from the lower platform. You'd choose this one, and the two backlights would snap down to the uh, lower platform, and then this one widens it up a little bit. If we have multiple vocalists on the lower platform, uh, this one is a good choice to make sure that they're all covered. Um, once we go over to preaching, hit the preaching position. This will snap four of the moving, moving heads to the lower platform, and then two of them will be focused on the musicians. Uh, lately, we've been having musicians play on stage softly through the message, so uh, they will also be lit. Uh, we probably wouldn't use these two for a, uh, a Sunday service. These are, are uh, motion profiles built into the moving head. So this will make them whip around in different profiles and do some crazy stuff. Uh, you know, this could be useful for like a play or a youth night or something like that. Uh, more to follow, more to add there. Uh, but once again, probably not something we'd use on a Sunday. It would be over in this zone over here. All right, uh, there's a few other useful features to be aware of on our lighting console here that we built in. Uh, the dimmers, so this is the master dimmer for all of the up lights here. So wherever the up lights are at, this will dim them all the way down and all the way up. Same for the back lights, so all the way down, all the way up, and this will always override wherever they're at. Uh, because our, our lighting profiles in these two boxes do not have dimming built into them, so this will always set the dimming. For our movers, we've actually programmed the dimming functionality into the scenes because we want different dimmings depending on where the lights are pointed and what the zoom level is. When they zoom in or out, that will change the intensity of the light. So we decided to just build that into the actual scene. Um, so typically, this is going to be all the way down. Uh, if you were to slide all the way up, this would max out the power of the lights and they would go full on, full power, if you, slide, if you slide it down to a certain point, the profiles that we have built into the positions are going to take over. So at no point is this going to zero out the lights. It'll just bring it down to whatever is built into the scene. So typically, we're going to keep that all the way down unless we had a reason to bring it up. Okay, so this only can increase the light. It can't take away from the light that's programmed into the scene. Okay, 
we have zoom sliders here. So uh, typically the scene is going to control the zoom. Uh, if we were to unselect the scene, the lights will should stay put in their last position. And then you could actually move these zoom controllers. This will control the zoom for all of the lights. And then you can control the zoom level for each light individually here, uh, each on their own. All right. And then if you wanted to snap them back to a pre preset position, you just turn that position back on and they'll snap to it. And then if you turn that position off, they'll stay put. They'll also turn off. You'd have to turn this up as well to get some light level, and then you can change the zoom. So there's kind of a hierarchy to how it works. Uh, also, the last thing is there's an XY pad here. This is probably not something you would use on a service, but this is the easiest way to get the movers to move around to a particular position if you ever should need them to do that. Uh, just be aware that it's a can be a little disruptive once you start pushing buttons here. They'll snap to weird positions, and and it's not something you're going to do uh, in the middle of a message while nobody is you know looking. It, it's going to be pretty obvious that the lights are moving to weird places. So just bear that in mind. But uh, it's something you could do before or after service if you wanted to mess with it. Uh, well, that's pretty much it. Just bear in mind that uh, each frame, keep, uh, these are solo frames. So everything inside of them only chooses one at a time. Uh, if you want the front lights on, you have to have a position selected, and that, that will bring up the intensity. Or if you deselect a position, you have to bring the slider up, and that'll, that'll bring the light power up. Uh, because these options here are just the color. They're not the, uh, the dimming intensity, which is not the case for our back and up lights. This controls the color and the intensity, and it typically it's, it's all the way up. So, well, that's a brief overview of, of the lighting console mode. Once you're done with the lights uh, run, running the service, you can simply close this. Yes, I'd like to close it, and the lights should shut off. If they don't, you can just turn them back on and, and stop them. Um, just also make sure that you only have one instance of QLC open at a time. If you have multiple instances of it, or if you have the editor and the kiosk open at the same time, you can send multiple signals to the lights and they will get very confused and they'll start flickering and moving around like crazy. So just keep that in mind that you only want to have one instance of QLC running on one computer. You're going to have two instances on two different computers sending the same signal and they'll get very confused. So, uh, well, with that, that, uh, completes this tutorial. Uh, if you would like to learn more about the editor mode, uh, obviously see uh, CKJ or see one of the other guys that uh, I trained to use the editor mode and we can show you how to be, do some basic scene editing, uh, adjust some colors and some positions. Uh, your creativity is the limit here. So whatever it is that we want to build onto here uh, into our scenes, whether it's motion or different pulsing colors, different types of colors, you know, there's a lot of different things that we can do. Um, so looking for ideas. Thanks. Bye.